Hey, everybody. Hi. <laughs> wow, what a way to start the day. <laughs> happy, happy Friday, everybody. Good to see you. Lots of people. Lots of people in the chat. Yeah, that 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 was close. That almost um, that almost didn't happen. Uh, we we're having some issues. <laughs> Just an issue with uh, with a a password basically is all we were uh, all we were missing. But it looks like it looks like we're rolling now. People are here. Fatis, Alexi, hi, Baldeep. Sing, Leanne, Masala, Jacqueline, lots of people here. Navjot is here. I see Steve Lynn is in the house, and uh, lots of other regulars. Jerry is here. <laughs> he had a heart attack. Oh man. Mm. Oh yeah. Well, so technical issues. A wonderful way to start the day. But here we are. Here I am. A couple minutes late, but better late than never. So if anybody is brand new to the class and has no idea what's going on, um, hi, I'm Sean, and I'm going to be your teacher for the next hour or so. I am um, live right now in Vancouver, Canada. I am downtown Vancouver at the Canadian College of English Language. Vivek, you want to hear your own name? Vivek? There you go. <laughs> okay. Anna did well on her vocabulary exam. That's great. Good to hear. Music to my ears. All right. So yeah, I'm, I'm at the Canadian College of English Language in Vancouver. Today is, is a special day happening um, across Canada, actually. It's an event called World Student Day. I just thought I would mention that. Um, an organization called Languages Canada is, uh, they put this on every, every year where it's kind of a celebration and appreciation of the international student. Oh, look at my, my huge hands here. The international students, because international students, very important for, uh, for Canada. Lots of international students here. So today is World Student Day. Steve Lynn is excited about it. Um, there are events in lots of major cities in Canada. If you're in Canada um, and you're a, a student of the world, uh, check it out. Um, there's some stuff downtown Vancouver if you're here. And it's almost the weekend. I think, or for some of you, it is the, the weekend. Maybe it's already Saturday where you are. Happy World Student Day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Happy Chocolate Day. That's even better. All right. So, yeah, it's almost the weekend. I am going camping uh, for the weekend, but we're not, we're not there yet. Okay? I still have some work to do. So, um, let's just jump into it. So, again, for... Uh, I almost forgot to say this, for anyone who's new, this is an intermediate level class. This is SMART 120 is the level. All right, but of course everyone is welcome to join. Higher or lower, everybody's, uh, we'll take anybody. Hi Marianne, Marianne's back. Good to see you. Okay, so um, let's jump into it. Let me go in here. And there I am. So, <clears throat> I'm going to start today with, with a question. I'm going to see how, um, how much or how little you were paying attention to me. Oh, my shirt looks a little, a little funny on the screen, but that's okay. So, my first question for you is, what did I say? <laughs> I just spoke for about, I don't know, three minutes. I said a bunch of stuff. Tell me something that I said. What did I just say to you? What did Sean say is the question. Kind of an easy question, maybe. But tell me, what, what was I just talking about? Anybody in the chat, tell me, put, put, put something in the chat. What did I just, what did I just say to you? <laughs> Steve Lynn says, you said, what did I say? Mm -hmm. I talked about student day, that's true.
Vivek, I said that I love you a lot? I'm not sure about that. <laughs> that doesn't sound like something that I would say. <clears throat> Zaya didn't hear what I was talking about? Okay. I asked a question. What else? <laughs> yeah. I said that I loved you. I don't, I, yeah, I don't think, I don't remember saying that. I said, yes, I'm Sean. Mm-hmm. Good. I'm going camping this weekend. Good. Yeah, some of you guys were listening to me. I talked about my shirt. <laughs> yeah, right. I talked about World Student Day, Iskander says. Yeah, absolutely. Good. I said international students are important to me in Canada from coastal al coastal. Good stuff, guys. All right, so you were paying attention to me. I knew you were paying attention to me. That wasn't really just a test to see if you were listening to me. I'm going to assume that you were listening to me. Jessica's asking, what, what is the content of today's lesson? Well, that's what I'm getting to right now, Jessica. That is a good question. So I'm asking you this question because today we're talking about reported speech, okay? Reported speech is the topic of today's lesson, one that um, oftentimes students have, have some trouble with, little, little things that students have um, trouble with using reported speech. Edeltrode Schmidt from Germany. Hello, Germany. All right, yeah, we're talking about indirect, yeah, rep reposted speech, okay. Reported speech is what we're talking about. This is a lesson that's probably going to take more than one um, class because there's a lot of stuff to talk about, okay? So let's jump right in. Bharat, you're a little bit late today, but that's okay because I was a little bit late today too, okay? So basically before we talk about um, the main lesson, I guess we have to talk a little bit about the different kinds of speech that we, that we use in English. When we are reporting what somebody else has said, okay? So first we have to talk really briefly about something called direct speech. Now of course I know some of you already know some of this. This might be a review for some of you. Um, others, uh, this might be brand new. Either way, as I said, everybody is welcome to, to join, okay? So direct speech, when we're talking about direct speech, yeah, we're talking about a quote, a quote, all right? So if you think about Einstein, for example, he had lots of um, famous quotes, right? One thing that, one thing that Einstein said was, <clears throat> anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. Nice quote from Einstein. A, a very good for a, a language class, right? You have to try something, you have to make a mistake. Julian's back, howdy. Good to see you. <laughs> I said, who did I say looks funny? I say, Einstein looked funny? Well, I'm not sure about that. Maybe I looked funny. Okay, so Einstein, famous, famous quotes. He also said something like, uh, imagination is more important than knowledge. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, I think that's a pretty good quote too. Okay, so direct speech are, is rather, rather the use of uh, quotes. All right, so direct speech, we use the speaker's exact words. If we want to talk about what someone else said, if we want to report that to you, we're going to use exactly the words that Einstein or whoever used, okay? Also, we use quotation marks, right? These guys. In direct speech, we put the words, those exact words, within quotations, okay? Hang on a second. All right, see you later, Pedro. Okay, so quotation marks, and what else? This, this form of direct speech is very common in, in the written use of, of the language, right, the written language. 
stories, novels, newspaper articles, right? Or again, when we're talking about um, a famous person, the words of a famous person, okay? Yeah? So this is direct speech, but this is not what we're going to be focusing on today. But just to be clear, let me give you a couple more examples of this, okay? Oh yeah, before we do it, we usually use the word say or the word ask if we're asking a question. Now let me show you. <laughs> now I don't know if it's actually World Chocolate Day today. I've never, I don't know, I don't know if that exists. <laughs> All right, so she said, my name is Joan, right? You use the word said or say to introduce the exact words that Joan used. So Joan said, my name is Joan, okay? This is direct speech. All right, let me show you another example. He said, I don't want to do that. Okay, I don't want to do that. <laughs> okay, yeah, relax, Vivek. <laughs> okay, and then the third one, uh, an example of a question in direct speech. They asked, where are you going? Okay, so again, this is direct speech. Um, but this is not the focus of today. Today, we're going to be talking more about um, reported speech, the indirect way of, of quoting somebody, okay? Right, reported speech. Well, Sway, you're out of here. See you, Julian. Thanks for, thanks for uh, popping in. <laughs> to be or not to be, that is the question. So whose quote is that, Jacqueline? Who, who said that? The good quote. <laughs> All right. So, reported speech. This is where students have a little bit of trouble, okay? Because there are some little tricky rules when you're using reported speech. Reported speech, you do not use necessarily the person's exact words. In fact, you are going to have to change some of those, some of those words. <laughs> An old English guy. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, Shakespeare wrote it. Um, I was going to say Hamlet, Hamlet said it, right? Technically. Well, I know William Shakespeare wrote the words, but that's fine. Do not use the person's exact words. Do not use quotation marks, okay? Do not use quotation marks. And you do need to change the pronouns sometimes that you use. By pronouns, I, need, I mean things like um, I, me, you, he, etc. Or possessive adjectives like my, your, his, her, okay? This is really common, more common um, than direct speech when we're talking about what other people um, have, uh, have said, okay? So we use this report of speech a lot. <laughs> yeah, Alexi's saying it's easy to be at a loss in this subject. I, yeah, it's, it's tricky. And Asal is asking, yes, you have to change it, and we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about how you change it. It is more difficult than direct speech, obviously, because direct speech is just repeating exactly what was said. But reported speech um, is much more common. I, I, I would say in in conversation when we're speaking, we don't use direct speech as much. Okay, so let's look at these previous examples of um, direct speech, and then I'll show you how they, what they look like in reported speech. <laughs> okay, so she said, "My name is Joan." Now, Jessica, you're asking about par. It's not exactly the same as paraphrasing. Okay, it's a little bit different. Okay, and JB87, you're you're getting a, a little bit ahead of me there. That's good. Okay. So, she said, my name is Joan. My name is Joan. Those were her exact words. That is direct speech, okay? Indirectly, or reported speech, we would say this. She said her name was Joan. She said her name was Joan. So, I am telling you what she said, but in a slightly indirect way. Chaminda Good, good for you. Now, there are a couple things we need to talk about today when it, go, when it comes to 
changing direct speech into reported speech. Okay? That's right. And some of you guys, you see it. You're ahead of me. This is good. Okay. So, first, we mentioned the pronouns. In direct speech, Joan says my name, obviously. But if I am talking about what Joan said, I'm going to change that pronoun from my to her. Okay? Because it's not my, it's not my name, right? It's her name now. So she said her name was Joan. Okay? There are a couple other things we're going to talk about, but for now, let's just focus on the pronouns. Alexi's saying, indirect speech, integral part of English? Definitely. Yes, we use it all the time. Okay? Think about it if you, if you miss a class. If somebody missed this class today, you might be telling your friend about something that I said. Right? We do it, we do it all the time. Johnny Karki saying, hello, hello. All right. So, I don't know if I, don't know if I just use direct speech or, or reported speech there, but here we go. He said, I don't want to do that. Okay? I don't want to do that. Reported speech becomes, he said that. He didn't want to do that. So, I, again, I becomes he. Okay? Because I'm not talking about myself. I am reporting what he said, okay? Also, I um, kind of highlighted the word that. With reported speech, we often use the word that um, after said or say, okay? Um, but it's not necessary. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. Right, you, good, good stuff. Now, John, good. So, he instead of I. And then one more, we said they asked, where are you going? They asked him where he was going. So with ask, oftentimes ask is followed by um, that object. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit about that later as well. So they asked him where he was going. No, right? It's not you anymore. It's he. Because we're not talking to him anymore. I'm just telling you what they asked. So Rosa says, Sean said that he was going camping this weekend. That is perfect reported speech. Rosa, thank you for that. And Anna, yeah, that's right. And we'll talk, we'll talk about that later too. One step at a time. You guys are, are doing very well. And Bharat, you're asking about don't to didn't? That's a great question. So Bharat is asking about this change here, where the, the direct speech, he says, I don't, and in reported speech, I said, he didn't, okay? And that's an excellent question. And let's, let's focus on that right now, because if you look at this, it's the same thing, Bharat, right? Direct quote is, where are you going? Where are you going, right? In the reported speech, you can see that I have said, where he was going. So, present simple becomes past simple, right? Present continuous becomes past continuous. And this is what we call a back shifting of tense, okay? That's right, good. Good, good, good. Okay, so, this is what Bharat is asking about, okay? Back shifting of tenses. When you go from direct to indirect speech, direct to reported speech, you have to shift the tense back. Okay, so let's talk about that. Arzang, um, am I going to talk about time expressions? Yeah. If we have time, we're going to talk about that. If not, we're going to save that for next class. Okay? So Sean says, what do I say? I am from Canada. Right? I am from Canada. That is the truth. I am in Canada. I am from Canada. That's my direct speech. That's my quote. Okay. And Nora, that's a good question. And I'll, I'll get to that too, Nora. So the most common way to turn this into reported speech would be Sean said, right? He, you're changing the pronouns. Sean said he was from Canada. So I am, 
becomes he was. Okay? Good. Now this is how we usually do it. We go back kind of one step in, in time in tense. Some of you guys are asking, well, do we always have to do that? Are there exceptions? Well, of course. It wouldn't be English without exceptions. Okay, now if we have time, we'll talk about some exceptions. But this is the general rule, how we usually do reported speech. But there is, yeah, one, you're asking about one tense back? I'll, I'll show you that in a second. And French Leo is saying, Sean said he is from Canada. I'm not saying that's not okay, okay? I'm not saying that's not acceptable, French Leo. In fact, in common usage, we do often say that because it's kind of a truth, right? Sean is from Canada, that's the truth. Um, oftentimes, we will report that in the same tense, okay? But also common, may perhaps more common, is to, to shift it back. Uh, everyone hates exceptions? No, I love exceptions. <laughs> okay, so we usually backshift the tense in reported speech. Now let me show you some more examples. So I went from present simple to past simple. Okay, I'm having a good time. Now this is present continuous, I'm having a good time. See this guy with the magnificent um, beard and mustache here, okay, um, is saying I'm having a good time. And she says, oh, it's too loud. What did you say? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. I said that I was having a good time. I said that I was having a good time. Okay. Grigorov, Vinci Grigorov, you're saying, unfortunately, I'm not from Canada? Well, Marianne, you're, you think I'm a little weird? <laughs> yeah, sure. That's fine. I, I accept that, and I, I, I agree. It takes, takes one to know one. All right, so I said that I was having a good time. That back shift from present continuous to past continuous. Okay? Right, a step backwards, exactly. Look at this delicious breakfast. This, was a, this is a picture of my breakfast this morning. <laughs> Right, so I ate pancakes for breakfast, <laughs> okay. He said that he had eaten pancakes for breakfast. He said that he had eaten pancakes for breakfast. Again, you're going past simple to past perfect. You're going one step back in time. Again, general rule, I'm not saying you always have to do it. Don't get angry at me, okay, but this is the general rule of grammar. This was not actually my breakfast. Um, this, is, this, is, this is my breakfast here. <laughs> All right, so you go from past simple to past perfect. Marianne, I know, it's weird. <laughs> it's probably going to get weirder, Marianne. I apologize. Okay? I have never seen an alien. I have never seen an alien. This is true. Okay, Farah is saying hello. Hello, Farah. No, and, and Sergey is asking a good question. He's saying, what about I was born in Russia? How would you say that? And you're right. I would probably, in that case, I would say he said he was born in Russia. To, because to say he had been born in Russia <laughs> is, is bizarre. It is bizarre. Okay? So again, oftentimes when we're talking about truth and fact, we, uh, we keep that tense. So there are definitely exceptions, as I said, okay? I have never seen an alien. We would commonly say, she said that she had never seen an alien, okay? She said that she had never seen an alien. Right. Okay, and now one more, I think, one more. You guys are getting angry at me in the chat here. It will probably rain this weekend. You said that it would 
probably rain this weekend. So oftentimes when we're talking about the future with will, in reported speech, will becomes would. Nora, <laughs> Nora you want those eyes? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, <laughs> just get some, get some contact lenses, I guess. Tule is saying, Sean, some people say Canadians do not know past perfect. So why are we learning it then? <laughs> um, I, I disagree with that, Tule. I don't know who says that Canadians don't know the past perfect. It's not as common as other tenses, but it's definitely a tense that is necessary. And if people say, the only reason I would say Canadians don't know the past perfect is maybe Canadians, the average Canadian doesn't know they are using the past perfect because they don't um, study grammar in the same way that you guys do, okay? But Canadians definitely use the past perfect, okay? Not as much as other tenses, but it's out there. You will see it, <laughs> okay? Good question. Now, Vivek, you're ahead of me here too. So, will becomes would. I can play the drums, can becomes could. I said that I could play the drums, right? I said that I could play the drums, that back shift in tenses. But there are exceptions, of course, okay? So we say will, would, can, could. Um, but some tenses, as we've said, and some modal verbs, we don't, um, we don't necessarily back shift. Vinci is saying past perfect is your favorite. I, I'm a fan of past perfect. I like that. I like that tense too. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of past perfect, all right. I hadn't fallen asleep yet. All right. You're talking about the past. When you, when you called me, when you sent me uh, an email, I hadn't fallen asleep yet. Okay. Now using that past perfect, Eli's saying hi from Argentina. Hi, Eli. I hadn't fallen asleep yet, reported speech becomes she said that she hadn't fallen asleep yet. You can't back shift that past perfect. There's no way to, keep, there's no way to go back, okay? And Ezekiel, yeah, and Alexi, you, you're, you're asking some good questions there, good. So past perfect stays the same in reported speech, and so does um, should and other modals, okay? So I should call her back becomes I said I should call her back. You can't backshift should, okay? The same goes for would, could, must, and might. And even, I would say even me, uh, may. Good. Yeah, I mean Vivek, you're saying shall to should? Sure. Except we don't, I mean, we don't use shall that much these days. I mean, shall isn't, isn't uh, as common as other uh, modals or, or helping verbs. Claudia is saying, why not I had to call her back? Well, you can say I had to call her back, but I had to call her back and I should call her back is not the same thing. Different meaning. Yeah, ought to, I wouldn't backshift that too. It would be the same. I ought to call her back. I said I ought to call her back. Oughta. Okay? So this is that, that backshift in tense. Okay? And one other thing that I'm going to show you, then I'm going to get you guys to do um, some work here for me. Hey, John Vidal is here. Good to see you, John. You got an A because of me? No, you got an A because of you. I didn't, I didn't do the work, right? <laughs> but thank you, John. Um, congrats, good work. Good for you. <laughs> Reported speech, say or tell. Um, tell, we can use both, okay? In reported speech, we use the verb say, we use the verb tell, but there are a little slight difference in the, in the way you use them, okay? So tell needs an object if you're using that for reported speech. Exactly. Good. Yusra saying hi. Hi, Yusra. Okay, so I told her that she was pretty. 
Okay, I told her that she was pretty. In this case, you got that object, her there, and then that, and whatever it was that I said. Okay, she told me that she was not interested. <laughs> okay. Also, you'll notice that that, I told her that she was pretty, I told her she was pretty. In this case, that is uh, removable. You don't need it. Sometimes we put it in there, sometimes we don't. Um, it's fine. Told me. Good, good, good. Okay. Show you another one. The teacher told us. Again, the teacher told us we were going to have a test the next day. Okay. Good, good. And one more. You didn't tell me that you were coming home today. What a surprise. And that is optional, JB87. Yep. So you didn't tell me you were coming. You didn't tell me that you were coming. It's optional. Okay. But with tell, you need that, you need that verb, or the, sorry, that, uh, the object. And Madiha, we'll, we'll talk about questions in a bit. Okay. Good one. You guys are always one step ahead of me. <laughs> now with say, you don't need an object. Sometimes we put the person in there, but it's not necessary. So I told her that she was pretty can also be I said that she was pretty. Okay. Gabriella saying, my mom told me I couldn't go to the party. Well, that's terrible news. Yeah, but I hope you listen to her. <laughs> So I said that she was pretty, same meaning, just a slightly different structure with say you don't need that object. But to be clear, if the, the second sentence, if I say I said that she was pretty, it's not clear who I said that to. All right? Maybe I said it to her, maybe I said it to my friend or myself. Okay. <laughs> Rosa, you're, you're telling me that you will never be an English teacher? That's report of speech. Yeah. That's report of speech, right, exactly. Because direct speech is, I will never be an English teacher, with quotations, right? She said, she's, <laughs> she said that she's in a hurry. This, this girl said she's in a hurry? Yeah, maybe. So to be clear, if I'm talking to her, you say that. I said to her that she was pretty. Okay, so you can put that to her. Barat, exactly, good for you, right? Or I said to my friend that she was pretty. That might be a, a little unclear too. I told Sean that he shouldn't drink too much coffee. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good advice, but you just reminded me. Mm. Again, it's how, it's how I stay sharp, right? You don't want to see me without my coffee. Embarrassing. Okay, so, whoa, I don't want to go that far. All right, so, I think you guys are ready to do some work for me, okay? <laughs> I, I am going to jump out here. Coffee is killing him. Yeah, maybe. All right, so, let me go up here. I'm going to make this full screen so everybody can see it. I'm pretty sure studies have shown that a little bit of coffee every day is good for you, actually. Don't worry about me. Moderation. Moderation is key. That's a good quote. Okay. All right. So here you've got six examples of direct speech. All I would like you to do is take each example of direct speech and change it to reported speech. So Wendy said he is going to invest in the company. Okay, How are you going to make that reported speech? Well, let's do this one together. You would say Wendy said that, okay, that he was going to invest in the company. Okay, simple as that. The present continuous becomes the past continuous. No need to um, change the pronoun here because Wendy is talking about someone else. Wendy is a woman's name, right? 
So if she says he is going to invest, she's talking about somebody else. So the pronoun can stay the same there. Good. All right. Um, go for it, guys. Do the, do the other five. Put your answers in the chat. I'm going to put the monkey music on, and uh, then we'll go over it together. All right? Go for it. I'm going to disappear for a couple minutes. All right. Good, 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 good. So much good stuff coming in on the chat. Uh, let's go over it together here. Okay, so um, maybe pop, maybe pop out here. Yeah, I'll do this because I like to change up the color a little bit. Let's go, let's go blue here. So the teacher said water is a liquid, but ice is a solid. <laughs> now I realized that this is this is unfortunate. Uh, that this example is here because this would be a common exception where I would probably not backshift the tense here. If you do, that's perfectly fine. If you said the teacher said, the teacher said, can't type, that water was a liquid, but ice was a solid. Okay, the teacher said that water was a liquid, but ice was a solid. That's perfect, okay? It's absolutely correct, okay? And <laughs> maybe Asala is, is, I don't know if you're yelling at me. Are you yelling at me? <laughs> because I know a lot, of, a lot of you put that answer, and that's, and that's fine to do it. It's not incorrect, okay? But I did notice that, for example, uh, Shirayuki, Shirayuki Momo, um, and a couple other people, Colwinder and Shaquille, kept it in the present tense. And I think that 
is perfectly fine and quite common to do it. This is the reason for this is that water is a liquid is a general truth. This is the fact, okay? And it's going to be true tomorrow. It was true yesterday, it's true now, it's going to be true um, forever. Water is a liquid, okay? The sky is blue. When you're reporting accepted general truths, facts, you don't have to backshift the tense, okay? And that's where it gets a little tricky is that the, the rules sometimes they're a little bit blurry. Okay, now, again, I repeat, it's not wrong, okay? It's not wrong to say water was a liquid, okay? Oh, Asala, you're yelling at me because you're a scientist? <laughs> okay. But this is um, probably more common if it's a fact like this, not to backshift the tense. But it's nice to have options, right? Yeah, freedom, it's wonderful, beautiful thing. Language is awesome. <laughs> okay, good. So, C, James said, I need to consider all the information before I decide. So let's turn that into reported speech. Let me look into the chat window here and find somebody's answer. So. Good. Okay. Good, good, good. Yeah, so we've got some different answers here. We've got James said. Now, French Leo, your answer is pretty good, Marianne. I think that would be the answer I would go with as well. But right, you almost had it, but you missed one little thing. Same with same with Nora, you missed one little little thing on there. So James said that he needed to consider all the information. Now before, whoop, and now don't forget about this pronoun here, right? He said that he needed to consider all the information before he, now French Leo you said before he decided. And that, whoop, that's okay. What's going on here? Come on. <laughs> Forget it. Okay. James said that he needed to consider all the information before he decided. I guess it depends when the decision was, okay? In this case, if the decision is now in the past because you're reporting the past, that's okay. Marianne's answer, you put decides, and, and that's okay too, right? Because maybe the decision, um, is still in the future, right? I would say it's more important to put um, that verb in the past tense, okay? Some of you just forgot the S or the D, okay? So James said that he needed to consider all the information before he decides. Before he will decide? Okay, yeah, that's, um, that's not bad, okay? But I would say either one Either one's good. Marianne, you're saying the sky is not blue? <laughs> yeah, sure. The sky, okay. That's not a fact. It just appears blue to us. Well, it's all about perception. I wouldn't say he looks blue. I don't think the sky is a man. Maybe is, uh, is the sky masculine in French? I say it, not he. <laughs> All right, so what about D? The boy said, my favorite kind of movie is science fiction. Let me find an answer up here. Diary is saying the boy said that his favorite kind of movies or movie was science fiction. That's perfect, Diary, okay? Let me change color here, stay consistent. And we'll say the boy said that his right, favorite genre of movie, movie genre, was, I'm going to get lazy, sci-fi, okay? The boy said that his favorite kind of movie was sci-fi. You're just taking that um, present simple, putting it in past simple there. Perfect. 
good. Yeah, Luciel, right, masculine. So you guys complain about you complain about English. At least English doesn't have feminine and masculine nouns, right? Or neutral. Who is it that's in Germany, right? Or or the Russians? You've got the masculine, the feminine, and the the gender neutral nouns. Talk about crazy. <laughs> okay. So the girl said, "I haven't figured out the answer yet." Okay, E, I haven't figured out the answer yet. Where's the answer? Who's got it for me? Okay, Shirayuki's got one there. Let's, let's, let's see somebody else here. Yulia Blinova says, the girl said she hadn't. That's good. The girl said that or know that she hadn't figured out the answer yet. Good. So I haven't becomes she hadn't. Wonderful. Okay, good, good, good. All right, one more, and then I'm going to get back into it and teach you a couple other things here. Whoop. So Michael said we need to come up with a better plan. And you guys said, most of you said, Michael said that, I mean, we or they, I mean, it's, it's kind of unclear, right, if, if I am part of the we, but let's just keep it to we, that we needed to come up with a better plan. So you're just shifting that tense one back. And UL got it. Now you, you changed we to they, and that, that could be. I would accept that as an answer, too. We don't really have all of the information here to know if it's we or they. OK? And good. Coltar, you got it. Good. All right, you guys are crushing it. Good stuff. So. That's the back shift. Now let's get back into here for, for a moment. Okay, back to this pretty lady here. So yeah, Alexi, you're asking the same, can you use um, the sentence with, without that? Yes. Yeah, if you're using said, right, um, you don't need that. Uh, no, and it can't be came, Edgar, because the, the verb there is needed, right? Coinder, when is that necessary? When you're reporting speech, that is, I don't know if it's ever necessary, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's <gonna> be 87. <laughs> now, Tarek, you're saying your sound is very low? I don't think the sound is, I think it, that's on your end, okay? All right, so mistake of the week. Yes, people are surprised. What's going on is the mistake of the week. Don't panic. We're not finished yet. We're not finished yet, okay? But um, it is time for the mistake of the week. Yeah, obviously, I know. The mistake is a mistake. Yeah, mistake of the week. For anybody who's new, this is what we're going to do. Hey, that rhymed. I'm like a poet. <laughs> Can you spot the mistake? I'm going to put a sentence on the screen, and I want you to try to tell, to tell me what I have done wrong, OK? What is the mistake in the following sentence? I'm going to disappear for five to 10 seconds, OK? And whoever puts the mistake, finds the mistake, and puts the answer in the chat, the fastest is the champion of the galaxy, OK? <laughs> All right, so again, we're not finished yet, okay? Which might be a little bit of a hint. All right, so I'm going to put the mistake up here. 
Rosa, this would be the one time that I would tell you not to listen to your heart, okay? All right, here we go. Find me the mistake in this sentence. I'll be back in five seconds, all right? Who's the champion? Go for it. Okay, find me that mistake. So, who is the champion? A lot of different, um, a lot of different theories in here. A lot of different theories. Um, but let me see, who was the first to find it? Now, some of you were saying so many. Some of you didn't like my use of the past perfect continuous there. Um, some of you just didn't like, yeah, bin. All right, but who was the first? Anna, I think you were the, uh, I think, Anna, you're the champion. Where, where's your answer? Yeah, okay, so I believe Anna Shakarova is the champion of the universe. All right, so the, the, the problem here, the mistake, the big mistake, when you say my teacher asked me why I had been missing so many classes lately, the mistake here is the question mark, right? Because when we, when we report a question, we're not asking a question, okay? A reported question is not a question. All right, so good for you, good for you, Anna, okay? And I know a couple other people got it too. I think Prasad, you got it. Who else? Who else got it? Muradi said the question mark. Navjot. Luis. Yeah, lots of people. Yeah, good for you. Anna was the quickest on the draw. Okay, so just keep in mind that a reported question is not a question. Okay, so you got to take that question mark and make it a period. Okay, because it is now um, a statement. You're saying full stop. That's right. Double champion for Anna. Way to go. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about reporting questions. Report a speech with questions. There are a couple tricky things that you need to keep in mind when you are telling somebody what another person asked. Okay? There are a couple things you need to think about. So reporting questions. As I said, they're not actually asking a question. It's telling you what the question was that was asked, okay? So just be careful of that. So because it's no longer a question, with reported speech it's not a question, you have to change that word order that you use to make a question, okay? So obviously you guys know when you ask a question, oftentimes you flip that word order of the helping verb right and the subject like this that helps you understand it right now <laughs> when you are reporting the question you have to flip it back right some sound effects there 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, JB87, you're talking about inversion. That inverted order has to be put back the way it should be for a statement, okay? So <clears throat> let me show you what I'm talking about. We saw this example earlier. The direct speech was they asked, where are you going? That was the question, right? Where are you going? With reported speech, we said they asked him where he was going, right? So a couple things, but the thing that I'm talking about right now is you'll notice, as, as I said here, you've got that helping verb or the modal or whatever it is in the question. You're using are here and then the subject, right? But in the reported version, you're saying he, you becomes he, was, are becomes was because you're back shifting the tense and you're putting the order right, okay? So that's why questions are kind of tricky because you have to remember all those things. Back shift the tense, change your pronouns and possessive adjectives, and make sure that the word order is that of a statement, not a question. Right. Gabriella's given a good example. My brother asked me what time it was, right? Not what time was it. Perfect. And as we just saw in the mistake of the week, that question mark becomes a full stop, period. Um, what Nora thinks is very cute. Very cute full stop in the corner. Yeah. I don't know if this, this is a little cute. Cute little full stop, period. There we go. <laughs> OK. Good. So this is what you have to watch out for with questions. Now, questions also get a little bit tricky if the question is yes or no. OK? Yes or no questions are a little bit different as well. So are you having a good time tonight? Very common question at a party. Um, right? Maybe this is, what, this is what this guy is asking this lady here. Are you having a good time tonight? Right? Who may say, well, you haven't missed the whole lesson yet, but yeah, you missed the most, <laughs> most of it. <laughs> um, I'll go a little bit longer today because I um, started a little bit later, but uh, we'll finish up with questions here at least. Are you having a good time tonight is the question, right? Now, when you turn it into reported speech, yeah, we say, I asked. I asked if you were having a good time tonight. So you'll notice in the direct question, there's your word order, right? Um, helping verb and then the subject. Is that a beaver, beaver beard? I don't know if beavers have beards, do they? I guess I, I don't know if I should know. Alexei, you think it's too complicated? Nah, it's not, it's not too complicated for you. You can get it. You can get it. It takes some time, but you'll, you'll get there. So are you having a good time becomes I asked you or I asked if you were having a good time tonight. Okay? I asked if you were having a good time tonight is the reported version. Um, if, there's also an, another option there. You can say whether as well. Okay? So for yes or no questions, can you swim? I asked if you could swim. Okay? I asked if you could swim. Using that if with the yes or no questions. One tip that I have for you is, again, just be careful with questions with the do, does, and did, right? Because just like a, a statement, right, when you've got a question with, the, with, the ver with do in it, where do you live, the statement, you're just going to remove that, that do. We don't normally use do or does um, as a helping verb in a statement, unless we're trying to be emphatic, right? I do live in Canada. We don't usually say that unless we're angry. That water looks nice. I want to just jump right in there. Wallet is saying hi. And oh, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm answering your question right now. You're saying, can we use did? So where do you live? You're not going to say, I asked you where you did live, right? You're going to remove that verb, do, and say, they asked us where we lived, not where we do live, right? She asked where I lived, or they asked us, right, where we lived. 
Okay. All right, maybe one more example. Do you like pizza? It looks like she likes pizza. It's kind of a silly question. Um, he asked her, right? Or he asked if she liked pizza, right? So you can say if or whether, but you're removing that that verb like there, or do. Well, I just got confused. <laughs> okay. There's too much going on on my screen here. So she, he asked her if she liked pizza. Man, I need some more coffee. Hang on. There we go. Okay, so how about this, guys? Let's do one more exercise, and then we'll go over it together, okay? I want to make sure that you guys are um, comfortable with the questions. Now, we talked about uh, place and time expressions. We're not going to have time to talk about time, okay? We're going to have to uh, save that for next week. But we are going to do one more practice exercise here, gang, okay? Let me go full screen. Again, six examples of direct speech. Um, I think most of them are questions. Maybe one of them is not a question. But I want you, again, to change them to reported speech. So you asked, did you see the comets last night? So the reported version is, right? Well, I guess if I'm saying you, so maybe I, right? I asked if. Now, in this case, hmm, did you see the comments last night? Yeah, I mean, I, I, in this case, I would use any pronoun because we don't really have all the information. I don't know exactly who you were speaking to, okay? Um, but maybe, how about for clarity? Let's say this. You asked if I had seen right, the comets Ooh, last night. Now that one's tricky. Now last night, that's what we'll talk about next week because sometimes you might want to change that. We're going to leave it for now, okay? But you may have to change the time expression depending on the situation. Now let me go blue text here, okay? So you asked if I had seen the comments last night. Your roommate was asking why past perfect. Well, you missed that part, right? But that's that's past simple there. Okay, so we back shift it. Okay. Now some people are saying why is it saw? But remember that I know that you see see here, but did is past simple, guys. Right? It's past simple. You want to put it back into the past perfect, okay? Good questions. So here, I'm going to disappear for a couple more minutes. I'll come back, we'll go over this together, and then um, you guys can go to sleep or, or whatever it is that, that you got to do <laughs> after class, okay? I'm going to disappear for one more minute. I'll put the, the music back on, okay? Go for it.
Good, good, good. Let's go over some of this stuff because we're running long here now, which is fine. Um, but I do have to go out. Can't be late for, for World Student Day. Got to go and check out some of the festivities, right? <laughs> All right. So, hmm. Let me see. Let me see some answers here. Now, B, Su Suzanne asked. Where did John go? Um, let me go down here so I can at least change the font here. All right, Suzanne asked, where did John go? So Steve Lynn said, Suzanne asked where John What do you say, Steve? Yeah, where John had gone. Some of you said where John went. Suzanne asked where John went. And that's in common usage. We would probably say that. But following those grammar rules, <coughs> you would want to put it in the past perfect, right? Because it's um, past simple there in indirect speech. So Suzanne asked where John had. Whoops, what am I doing? What am I doing? Thinking too much about World Student Day. Done. Gone. There we go. So, where John had gone. <laughs> okay. Good. Good stuff, guys. And Tule, I think you had the same answer there. Right. Jose, good. Had gone. Yeah, I fixed it. <laughs> and Polexio is saying, yeah, I know, I know, I know. You guys, you guys are so... You're unforgiving on the mistakes. I forgive you guys for your mistakes all the time. <laughs> yeah, right. So Polexio was saying, yeah, where he went, in common usage, you would probably say that to a friend, yeah. Okay, it's fine. Joanne asked, have you been to that restaurant? Oh, we're, it's just, it's all past perfect here, isn't it? I should have come up with more examples. So what did you, what did you guys say for C? Anna, yeah, you got it. Good. Marianne, good, good, good. Let's see somebody else, somebody else, somebody else. Who have I not uh, given a proper shout out to? Yeah, Nabjot. Joanna asked. Yeah, right. Joanne asked um, if. You said we, we, I, yeah, you said we, that's fine. If we had been to that restaurant. Right, Joanne asked if we had been to that restaurant. Perfect. Good stuff, guys. Or if, if you said if I had been, that's good too. Okay, now D was not a question, but a statement. Okay, but I was looking to see if you guys would use um, tell or told instead of said. <laughs> JB87, you're, you're angry at me? All right, so D, 
We said the prof, I'm going to get lazy here. The prof told the class that they, well, it could be we, because it's people. No, I'd say we. Okay? We have to reduce pollution because he's not telling the class that they have to reduce pollution. It's everybody. We is in the common, uh, the population of the planet Earth. Okay? Now that's, that's, again, a tricky one. Man, every single one of these is past perfect. Sean, dropping the ball here. Terrible. All right? So the pro <laughs> told the class that we had to reduce pollution in order to save the planet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so two more here. Prof sounds cool? Yeah, the prof. Well, I'm 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 cool, right? I use the lingo. Good. Now two two more here before we're done. Think up upstairs here, I'm already done. I'm already gone. <laughs> I'm already at World Student Day, eating a slice of pizza. All right, so let me go here. My friend asked, do you need any help? Okay. <laughs> Alexa, are you defending me? Oh, <laughs> yeah, they can judge me if they want. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. One more. Who's got E? 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 I'm trying to find someone that I haven't picked on yet. But it's all the same. It's all the same folks here. Asala. Yeah. That's fine. So my friend. Whoops, my friend asked if I needed any help, right? My friend asked if I needed any help. Wonderful. Or weather. If you guys said weather, awesome. Okay, and the last one, I think Vanya, you had one. Where was, where was Vanya? What was your answer for that one? I think you had it there, right? Susan asked. Susan, Suzanne. Oh, no, Suzanne was up there. Now it's Susan. Good variety of names here. Yeah, not confusing at all. Good job, Sean. OK, so Susan asked, what should we do for Oscar's birthday? And Vanya said, Susan asked what? Ooh, careful with that one, Vanya. OK, just be careful of the, the word order. So Susan asked, now not. You said, not what should we do, right? Not what should we do, but she asked what we should do for Oscar's birthday period. I can, I can do this. I can be lazy because I'm the teacher, but you guys can't, OK? You have to, you have to write the whole thing. <laughs> okay. So Susan asked what we should do for Oscar's birthday. Okay. JB87 indirect speech is, is more difficult. Yeah, yeah, it's tricky. It's tricky. Sergey, you got it. Okay. Good, 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 good. So, guys, that's about where we're going to stop today, just talking about questions. Um, next week, and Yulia, you're saying should now. We don't, you can't really backshift should, right? Um, so, no, you don't change should. It's one of those exceptions, just to confuse you, just to make everybody angry, and type, type in all caps with exclamation points in the, in the chat. Alexa, no, you can you can get it. You can get it. Now, should again, should is just an exception. Okay, um, 
I mean, the past past of should is should have, but that um, would be confusing. So you just don't change the tense. Pamela, why, why the sad face there? What's that sad face for? Just because we're we're finishing, hopefully. <laughs> All right, guys. So, yeah, that's where we're going to stop um, for today. We've got more to talk about with the reported speech, okay? Um, it is tricky. I know that some, some people are like, oh, why? Why me? Um, English is so hard. There are a, a few tricky little rules here and there, but um, you will get it. Remember that, remember that Einstein quote at the beginning. Remember what Einstein said, right? He said that anyone who says that they have never made a mistake, never tried anything new. Is that what he said? I forget. And Sorin Bun is asking about the question marks. Yeah, just go back and watch, watch the, the, the whole lesson because we did talk about the question marks there, okay? All right, so next week we continue with reported speech. In the meantime, keep making lots of mistakes. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop out of here. Okay, let me go here first. We'll go all the way down. Go here. I'm going to disappear. I'm going to go here. Okay, so everybody's saying thank you, thank you, thank you. No, thank you guys. Thank you for coming. Um, I always look, uh, I look forward to jumping in here and teaching you guys for a little bit every week. Um, it's lots of fun. Rand, you don't understand anything? Oh man, that's, that means I didn't do my job, okay? So just go back and, and re-watch it and maybe, uh, maybe you'll, you'll get it the second time through. But we'll, we'll keep talking about it next week, okay? And yeah, guys, it's summertime, which summertime at the school is, is, is quite a uh, busy time. So I know that I haven't, I haven't been on that Facebook group as much as I used to be because things at the school are super busy with the summer students and we've got other um, big things going on here for the um, for the fall too. So, yeah, it takes up a lot of my time. But people are asking, how do I ask you questions? Keep keep putting them on that Facebook group, and I'll try to get to them. Okay, the Learn English on Facebook. Okay, uh, I know I have been uh, neglecting some of you. I apologize. Okay, um, and Prasad, that that is to you. You're asking that question. Okay. Top banana, Anna. Oh, it's going to you. It's going to your head. Paluxio, you missed the mistake of the week. We did a little bit earlier. Anna, Anna's the champion there, and uh, <laughs> she's feeling it. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. So until next week, uh, keep practicing your English. Keep making mistakes and trying uh, new things. Don't be afraid to use reported speech because it's kind of tricky. Um, you know, you want more classes? Yeah, maybe in the future. I don't know if I have time right now. But I'm a busy man, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. But um, thanks for coming in. Uh, I'm going to go check out World Student Day here in a, in a couple hours when it gets, gets rolling. And um, yeah, as always, thanks for, thanks for coming. Tell your friends, tell your mom, bring everybody into the classroom. Um, and have a good weekend. Uh, and have a good week, and we'll see you here next time, next Friday. Okay, guys? I will be here. <laughs> okay. All right. Got to roll out, guys. See you next time. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel. Also, if you want the full experience of being a student in a smart live class, with things like homework and teacher feedback, follow the link and become a premium subscriber. Also, if you want to see more videos from this class, check out our playlist.